Today we will give an introduction about the subject Computer Science, Cambridge IGCSE. This subject is very useful for students who are going to attend uh, computer engineering, computer science, and engineering in general. This subject can be considered the extension of uh, Cambridge ICT. Uh, with ICT, you study uh, basics of computer, you study how to use computer. But with computer science, you study more about how the computer is working. You study more about programming, about how devices are, are working. Uh, this, this subject is designed very well by Cambridge. Uh, with so many skills, so many useful skills, and so many uh, exercises and uh, assessments. And uh, Cambridge are very good at measuring the skills of students. They actually they measure the actual stu skill. So if you become skillful at this subject, you will enjoy a lot. You will get a lot of marks. I will give few words about the subject, looking at uh, the notes. So this is K University of Cambridge, uh, IGCSE, Computer Science, 0478. And this uh, notes is presented by me, Dr. Ayman Hagek. With chapter one, we talk about binary and hexadecimal systems. The computer only deals with ones and zeros. Computers only deal with ones and zeros. And from this ones and zeros, we make all numbers. Like, for example, this one one z one 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 zero one 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 zero. This number is in binary. You will be asked to convert it to binary. It will be something like two hundred and thirty-eight in our numbering system. How you can do this? You have to do a few simple mathematics. Uh, but without a calculator that is written on the cover of the exam. No calculators are allowed, but it's only a matter of multiplication and addition. And through the course, you will practice and remember these uh, calculation skills. So chapter one is about binary numbers, uh, measurement of the size of computer memory, hexadecimal numbering system, and so many calculations and so many conversions and so many examples about like, for example, how characters are encoded on the computer. Also about uh, machine code and IP address and MAC address. This uh, coming to chapter two, chapter two is about communication and internet technology. We study about methods of transmission. So transmission may be one way only or maybe two ways, but not both at the same time or two ways, both at the same time. We study whether transmission is parallel or serial. Like if you have eight wires to transmit the data, we call this parallel. If you have a single wire to save uh, on the cost of wiring, we call this uh, serial access. We, and we study the universal serial bus. You know that all devices are now connected to the computer using USB, universal serial bus. Uh, and then bit of advantages and disadvantages and how to recover from an error. Like for example, if a computer is sending a one and it is received as a zero, there should be a way of detecting this error and probably correcting this error. And then we talk about internet technologies. Uh, I like so much students who have studied uh, ICT. ICT gives a very solid introduction to computer science. And I claim that like 30% of computer science is already in ICT. Uh, and uh, hope, uh, uh, happily in Egypt, now they are considered two separate subjects. I'm saying this because internet technology is just exactly the same as it is in ICT. We study about internet service provider. This is the company that provides me with internet access. You need to use a browser to be able to search the net and you would deal with web servers. And this is a URL uniform resource locator. You have to type it in to access a website. Then we go to the next chapter. I will talk about few chapters. I don't think I have enough time for an introduction to talk about the whole subject. Chapter three is logic gates. I also favor students who have studied physics because logic gates is already in physics O level. This is the not gate. This is the end gate. This is the or gate. We will be dealing with ones and zeros like 
in the very basic uh, way, uh, if the NOT gate is an inverter, if one is input, the output will be zero. If zero is input, the output will be one. So it inverts the input. With computers, we only deal with ones and zeros. The AND gate is very strict. It needs two inputs of one to output one. The OR gate is very kind. Any single one will result in a one. And we study the NAND gate, the NOR gate, and then we start building circuits and writing equations about uh, logic gates. And then we start studying some practical examples of logic gates, uh, like how it is used to control uh, a device using sensors. Like I will give an example here. Let us read this example. It says a wind turbine is has a safety system, which has three inputs. Input S, that is the turbine speed. Input T, this is the bearing temperature. And input W, that is the wind velocity. And if certain conditions happen, like if the wind speed is so much, and like the temperature is overheating, I think a signal of one will be output to, to shut down the wind turbine for safety. This is a practical example about the use of logic gates. We have to do a lot of exercise. My notes is so full of exercises and all of them taken from past paper because you need to be as close as possible to past paper to practice in the right way. Then we study about chapter four operating system, you know, the operating system that is Windows. This is the most important software on your computer. If it crashes, I think the computer will all crash. Then we study about the architecture of the computer from the inside, like you have the processor, you have the RAM inside the processor, you have control unit, arithmetic and logic unit, registers, and how data is going backward and forward between the processor and the memory unit using data bus, address bus, and control bus. And this is chapter four. If we go to chapter five, Chapter five is about input and output device. I can claim that this chapter is almost like ICT, like studying uh, in so many input devices like the scanner, like uh, barcode reader, like uh, this is application of the use of barcode in the supermarket. Uh, this is called the QR code. You, you read it with a mobile camera and an application on the mobile. We study how the digital camera is working. We study how the microphone is working. We study uh, about several types of touch screens. So with computer science, you study how the device is working. A little bit about the technology used in the device. Uh, then let's skip a little bit faster. Then if we go to chapter six is about memory and storage media. You can know that uh, MP3 files are used for audio. MP4 files are used for video. JPEG files are used for picture and text, doc and PDF are used for text and numeric files. Then we study about storage devices, like for example, uh, this is the RAM, this is the ROM, this is the hard disk inside of the computer. This is the new version of the hard disk. This is solid state drive SSD. Uh, this is optical storage devices. That is the CD-ROM or DVD-ROM that reads and writes using laser beam. That's why we call it optical. And this is USB memory and memory core. And this is chapter six. Chapter seven, we are coming closer to programming. We study about compile level programming languages, low level programming languages, a compiler, an interpreter. We study about, uh, we study a little bit about everything uh, until you get a very good and solid basic knowledge about computer science. And then we study about security and ethics, uh, the consequences of hacking, how to avoid hacking. Uh, you, you may use a firewall to protect you from hacking. You may use uh, encryption so that if data is accessed by unauthorized people, data will not be understood. Um, so many useful topics about computer science. Then the big part, the most interesting part is programming. 
So we the second part of the chapter of the syllabus is programming. We study about how to write very simple programs, how to to trace programs, how to find errors in programs. Programs will do very little calculations, like calculating the average, finding the maximum mark among students, and the name of the student who got that maximum mark. And we will we can have a lot of. Uh, exercises until you study the whole thing and get hold of the skills you need to pass qualify learn enjoy and hopefully at the end you get your a star and go to the university you wish that's all what i can say about a brief introduction to computer science quite an important subject quite an interesting subject i hope you will all benefit and you will all get the grades you want and i hope to be a clear in explaining this subject. Thank you very much and see you soon in my our online classes with Brainbox.